this is the all new 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. And it's not L for L, it's L for long. More specifically, this is the Summit Reserve 4x4, which is the top trim level. Once upon a time, the Grand Cherokee was a Mercedes, but now, now it's better. Gone is the Daimler platform, because now this steel uniframe body is based on the Giorgio platform from the Alfa Romeo family. So that also sounds promising in terms of handling. Well, if handling can apply to a monster that weighs 2.3 tons. The new design is almost identical to the new Grand Wagoneer, the bigger brother. I really like it to be honest, it's very identifiable as a Jeep and it also looks very elegant. Engine options are the 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar engine and of course the more manly butch 5.7 liter V8 Hemi with the fuel saver MDS stuff. And of course the one we have here today is the manly butch one. This Summit Reserve trim is the top of the line and it's amazing on so many levels. It comes with a Quadra lift air suspension, which is not only very comfortable over rough terrain, it's also very durable and it can lower and lift the body by a lot. Towing capacity is also very good at 7,200 pounds. It's almost class leading. Being a serious Jeep, this thing also comes with a two speed transfer case. So it has a four low mode and that has a ratio of 2.72 for difficult situations on and off road. So this is an SUV with real big cajones. Inside, it's truly luxurious and I'm a big fan of the design. They've used very high grade materials. They're put together wonderfully. There are no rattles or squeaks even in these freezing temperatures. I love this interior as it's very good looking and equally functional. It has clearly labeled buttons. Everything is easy to use. The tech is great and there are plenty of cubbies for your stuff. The seats are also extremely comfortable. They support the body very well. They have a massage. The two front rows are heated and ventilated. You also get a heated steering wheel. Roominess is really good. Up front, it's fantastic. The middle row is also fantastic. Access to the third row is very good. And if you're up to six feet tall, you will also be able to sit there quite comfortably. You also get curtains in the back, a third zone in the climate control, and everybody gets charging ports for their devices. The trunk is a good 490 liters with all seats up, and it becomes a massive 1,330 liters with a third row stowed away, which happens with the press of a button, by the way. So cargo and utility is top notch. Technology is also very advanced here and very impressive. You get a really nice instrument cluster with many views so you can really customize what you see and the information relayed is mind blowing. There's just too much to view here. You have a very nice heads up display. The infotainment system, the base thing also is really good. It's the new Uconnect system and it looks very nice. The graphics are great. The response is really good. It supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You get a lot of USB ports up here too and a wireless charger, and CarPlay is wireless. Did I say that? Wireless. You also have pretty good driving assistance that work pretty well. The steering wheel feels your hands, so as long as you're touching it, it's good to go. It also has good cameras. It has a rear view camera in the mirror, but I really like this feature, which is called the family cam, which lets you pick which seat in the back you wanna view so you can monitor your babies or your naughty kids. The sound system is a 19 speaker Macintosh system and holy crap, it's not that loud, but it's so clean and quality and full. The sound is really nice. I love it. Another really cool feature is night vision, which also works during the day, by the way. It also has pet, animal and pedestrian detection. As mentioned earlier, under the hood, we have a big manly 5.7 liter V8 Hemi with a fuel saving features, but no auto start stop. It makes 357 horsepower and 390 pound feet of torque. It is made it to a ZF sourced eight speed automatic, which is pretty good. And it's able to propel this big SUV to hundred kilometers an hour in 6.8 seconds. It's pretty good, it's quick. Performance is overall pretty good. I mean, this is not a sporty SUV, so it's, quick enough so that you don't call it slow. It has adequate muscle, it makes a good sound, and it works really well with this modern transmission. It's pretty heavy on fuel. 17 liters per 100 kilometers on average is what you can expect. Maybe a bit more if you have a heavier foot than I do. So running costs are gonna be on the high side. At least it runs on regular. Handling is much better than it was before. It just feels sure-footed on the highway. It just 
shoots straight. It's such a rock solid machine. You can definitely tell it has that little Italian heritage underneath. It's very muted, obviously, because it's a big, heavy monster. I mean, it corners very well. You know, there's no stress. There's no doubts. There's nothing. The steering even has some feel. It's not completely dead. The brake pedal feels great. The brakes are pretty strong. And by the way it handles in these snowy, icy conditions, even on all season tires, shows that handling is pretty promising. I mean, we can't really test it per se, but you know, it's slippery outside, but you know what? It stays rather flat. It doesn't lean too much. It's not scary. And even though it feels very big, like this, when you drive it, it feels as big as let's say an Escalade or something at that size, like one up. But once it starts moving, it feels a little bit smaller and nimbler. It doesn't feel small, but it's not a big, heavy tank or kinda. Comfort levels are superb. The suspension does a fantastic job soaking up bumps, but it also has active noise canceling, which makes it even more serene in here. Off-road, it'll be able to do quite a lot. It does have all the necessary gear and heritage, so don't feel sorry for it. Use it as intended. With the air suspension fully up, the approach angle is 28.2 degrees, the ramp breakover angle is 22.6, and the departure angle is 23.6. Prices in Canada for the Summit Reserve with the V8 start at $73,745. As tested, this is $84,600. Overall, I have to say I'm really impressed with the Grand Cherokee L and what you get and how it drives and features and build quality. Everything is really good. If I would have to complain about something, it would be I'd like a more modern drivetrain that's better on gas because now with the new gas prices, this is going to hurt. And of course, all the competition has you know, smaller displacement turbo engines or bring back the diesel. Please bring an eco diesel one of these. I would love that. I would actually buy it. I really like the diesel motors. Uh, there is a plug-in hybrid version coming, the 4XE, just like the Wrangler. Uh, that's going to be good uh, for sure. But until that one comes along, you know, the kind of drawback will be the engine options. I mean, for Patriots, like, you know, people here we do like our v6s and our v8s and that's all good uh, i have no problem with it if gas prices return to normal then the v8 is fantastic why not overall score i'd like to think that it's closing up to excellent but it's not there yet by like a hair width so 8.9 is the overall score if you like this video please remember to subscribe share it with your friends most importantly till next time be well bye-bye